hello guys welcome to the open source solution bay channel so we are into the online training courses for linux administration database and civil automation as well as the you know devops and today we are going to see one of the topic from the linux administration so this practice is based on the centos linux 7.7 and the topic which we are going to look into is user administration so uh, let me you know give some basic details about the user administration in the linux so if you're looking at the user things in the linux there are three types of users one is local user the one which are we are going to create on the local machine and we are going to log in on the same machine the other is system users uh, what is the system users i will explain later the third one is network users so we are not going to look into the network user as of now but basically we are going to check it out the local user administration that is what we are going to see so in the user administration there are few important files that you need to be considered that you need to be read it out also there are fields in the files those fields you should know each and every field and uh, the uh, interview prospective people will ask you what are the different fields available in those configuration files so you you should you should be able to answer those questions let me show you the configuration files first this is the one this is the second one also look after the permissions in real time whenever you are working or troubleshooting the local user authentication issues at that time you should be able to understand that this is having no permission to anybody these are the two important files password shadow and these two configuration files as you know in the file system hierarchy slash etc will hold all the configuration files uh, also for the user administration so the main uh, you know the command to use to add the user into the system is user add let me add the user as a tom user add tom enter tom is already exists sorry user at tina so this is the user i'm adding using the user at command so now as i have you know confirmed that the two configuration files in one configuration file what are the different specific details will be available for the user that we are going to see that is etc password file so if you look at the password file there are seven fields one is username the one which we use to add the user the other one is password placeholder the third one is uid fourth one is gid this is comment section the you know space in between two colon is the comment section this is the home directory and the last one is the shell so these are the three uh, seven different fields available in the etc password file people will ask you in the interview what are those seven fields so you should be able to answer this question so basically system will uh, will not understand the names which we are going to give but in the back end system will use the uid and gid whenever you are going to create any files using the user let me switch it to the let me add password as well to that user this is the command to add the password to the particular user let me give password tina and the password is you need to type twice and once the password has been set you can try logging in into the machine using the same the tina user sorry let me get it to the duplicate session it's tina and this is the password so you are into the home tina why it is getting reflected as a home tina because you must have you know, gone uh, focused on you must have seen the option as home tina this is the configuration file uh, detail this is the detail which is there in the configuration file slash home slash tina so that is why whenever the user logged in at that time by default he will get into the slash home slash tina if you are aware about the file system hierarchy then uh, slash home is only used for the people who are you know getting added into the machine their home directories will be saved under the slash home itself so this is how you can add user you can provide the password to the user also you can log into the machine using the same user so basically if you look at these are the default parameters 
default parameters so these parameters can be changed by using two ways one is by going into the file directly you can change the ids over here whichever id you wanted to change it let me change it to the you know what you call seven so uid will be 1007 gid will be 1005 and comment let me add this is the test user and this is the home directory by default if you want to change this home directory first you need to create the directory whichever you wanted to add that directory as a home directory for this user then after you can change the content else we can change it over here make it as a local home local home slash tina so let me check it out i have you know changed manipulated three different things one is uid i have changed it to 1005 to 1007 this is the test user okay comment i have added and this is the home directory that i have changed earlier it was home slash tina now it is slash local home slash tina so let me save this file go to the other window where we logged in already id enter it is showing as 1005 because we logged in using the tina id before changing the uid so that is why it is showing the old uid now let me exit from this command line and here i have changed the home directory to slash local home so let me create that slash local home first local home local home is already there let me get into the local home and here you can see dennis is there make directory tina for this user i have changed the location and ls happen ld tina <coughs> so if you look at the permissions of this directory you will be able to see read write execute is for the owner of the directory read and execute permission for the group of the directory and other people will be having read and execute permission so who is the owner root is the owner root is the group owner so whenever we try to log in using the tina at that time it won't allow us to get into this directory because the owner is root let me give you the demo duplicate session tina enter password enter if you look at this oh yeah uh, we will not able to uh, create any files over here because the owner is root so let me change the permission of that particular directory ch own tina colon tina tina is the user let me get it now if i do the test file it it is you know allowing the creation ll if you look at the file this is the test file created today by tina user and owner is the tina group owner is the tina so this is how you can customize the users home directories so this is the one way of changing the things using the direct vim editor the other way of doing it that i will show you uh, user mod user mod is the command if you user mod space hyphen hyphen l if you type it you will see different options those can be used using the user mod so this is basically the user administration user administration means adding user removing user or you know editing the current user properties that all come under the same thing so we have seen it what we have seen it changed the uid okay we haven't unlocked or locked the machine uh, sorry user and uh, what you call what you have changed home the home directory we have changed we have added the comment so rather than editing using the vim editor what you can do you can also change the options using these uh, particular options also change the co uh, configuration details let me change the comment first for the demo purpose this is edited using the user mod command and uh, user is tina now earlier it was the different comment now it, it needs to be changed to the this comment this is edited using the user mod command if you look at this you will be able to understand so this is how you can you know modify the user properties user mod hyphen c is the option hyphen d can be used to the let me re revert it back the home directory user mod hyphen d slash home slash tina tina is the user oh user is logged in already so that is why it is not it will not allow to change it now it should okay now if you look at the password file you will be able to see it's slash home slash tina earlier it was slash local home 
so this is how you can configure the different things you can also try user mod hyphen l capital l for lock yes tina i locked in uh, lock that user if i try to log in it will not allow me to log in tina password access denied connection access denied see because we have locked that account so basically this scenario will comes in whenever some you know some employees are leaving our organization at that time what you can do rather than deleting their home directories and their user, user account you directly lock those user and we'll take the backup based on the business requirement and then after once you are sure that you got everything which is there under that user home directory you can delete that account so meanwhile the yell option will be useful to lock the account to capital U to unlock the account now it will allow to log in see you are inside the directory now inside the Tina user so this is how you can add users these are the different things those you can you know you can modify the UID as well let me modify it for you it's 1007 it was 1007 earlier now I have reverted back to 1005 so currently logged in let me exit hmm. it's 1005 now you can see so this is how you can use user mod and different options basically uh, the options which you need to understand th that is uid for changing uid and l unlock as well as g for changing the gid group numbers as well as d for home directory c for comment okay you can also use shell to change the shell of that user how to do that user mod happiness has been slash slash sh tina now if you do earlier it has been bash now it has been sh so this is how you can change the properties of the user now uh, what you call the let me get it into the system users so the ids which are you know less than 1000 system ids ga uids which are less than 1000 those are considered to be the system users and what is the system user basically this is the FTP protocol, FTP service, and this is having UID 14, GID 50. So this is considered as a system user. And how that can be identified? Whichever service you are going to install on the machine or whichever service is already installed using the system installation, that particular service will be having the account on the machine. So those are called the system users. This is for security purpose. If let's say FTP, you know, if you got the access if there is no service for the FTP itself then people uh, let's say some people are trying to hack your machine at that time if that machine is got uh, you know permission to access to that particular FTP service if that particular user is not there then it he will be having access over all the system so to segregate segregate the authentication methods or uh, giving the extra uh, per, uh, security concepts over the machine this uh, concept is implemented like system users will be having the different uids if anybody got into the ftp then he will be having access over ftp itself system there will not be any exploit except ftp so this is the main reason of putting it into the different segregated method so now ftp is the system user any service which is being installed on the machine that will be having the uid and that is called the system users so this is uh, that's it and system user side is will be having one two nine 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 zero will be the uid of the root user by default and one starting with one two nine triple nine those will be having uids for the system users and whichever the users you are going to create locally those will be having thousand and above so if you look at this test user which i have created the first user it is having thousand and one thousand one two three four five this is this is how it will get you know expanded and all those things from where these are getting reflected this is the file not etc login dot defs so this is the file where the uid limit you know are mentioned and based on this the things are getting reflected to the user who are you know getting added onto the machine if you look at this here the maximum password password maximum days the, that file I, we are going to look into it so you will able to understand that file is impacted by this configuration file also if you look at this uid minimum thousand uid maximum sixty thousand this is the range 
सिस्टम यू आई मिनिमम टू जीरो वन सिस्टम यू आई डी मैक्सिमम नाइन 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 सो जी आई डी सेम जी यू आई डी जी आई डी रेंज विल बी सेम सो दिस दिस इज द मेल डायरेक्टरी विच इज कॉन्फिगर्ड वेन एवर यूजर विल गेट क्रिएटेड एट दैट टाइम ऑल द कॉन्फिगरेशन विल गेट पुस्ट फ्रॉम हियर टू यूजर होम डायरेक्टरी क्रिएट होम यस इफ यू पुट नो देन यूजर होम डायरेक्टरी विल नॉट बी क्रिएटेड यू मास्क वट इज द यू मास्क वैल्यू इफ यू आर नॉट अवेयर देन लीव इट एज ऑफ नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन इन टू द डिफरेंट सेशन यूजर ग्रुप सेनेबल यस एनक्रिप्ट मेथड शो दिस इज द मेथड विच यू आर यूजिंग इन द एनक्रिप्शन सो दिस इज द फाइल विच इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल टू गेट डिफरेंट थिंग्स इम्पैक्ट यू नो एडेड इन टू द यूजर एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन यूजर स्पेसिफिक यूजर होम डायरेक्टरी also the other file is less etc shadow so this is the file if you look at this tina line you will be able to understand so basically this is the first username the second is encrypted password for that user we have created the password for that user that is why it is getting into the encrypted format and these are the different parameters which will hold password aging password aging means it should be giving the idea about uh, you know till how man how how many months or how many years that password will not get expired and before how many months or how many days you will get an password change alert and after certain after which time interval that account will get locked if you are not changing the password so these are the different parameters and this file includes seven nine fields this particular line which is holding nine fields in the etc shadow people will ask you i will cover it in the different section which are the different nine fields are available in the etc shadow file so user administration is done so this is how we can uh, add user modify users and if you want to delete it you can delete it user del tina this will not delete your home, uh, user home directory because that is for the backup purpose as i have already given the example if anybody is leaving our organization then you don't need to delete his or her particular data because once she left our organization we can lock the account and we can take the backup and it will take some days maybe 10 or 15 days once you are sure that you have taken everything then you can delete that directory user delta now now that user how will you confirm there are two different things one is id tina no such user the other one is it is a password file you can check it out tina is not there so this is how you can add user id